Hi. So here we are talking about um, equilibrium of rigid bodies in 3D. So in this case, we have a pipe that is uh, bent in this form right here. The, this is point A. And we have a fixed support at A. What means fixed support? That it restricts every single possible, possible motion of the pipe. This pipe, since it's in 3D, it could move in X direction, back and forth, can move in Y direction, back and forth, can move up and down in C direction. So that means that if this restricts all the translation, it will have three reactions to restrict those three possible motions. But it also restricts that this fall in this direction will be a moment in X, a rotation in X, Therefore, a fixed support will produce a moment. It prevents that it rotates in this direction. So if, since it's preventing a rotation, it produces a moment in this direction. And it prevents to rotate along its axis. Therefore, we have also a moment along the axis. So a fixed support in 3D produces six reactions. So let's draw our free body diagram, which is always the first step. So we draw our free body diagram and we reproduce our beam, right? And as I said, we have to isolate the pipe from the surrounding. So we take the support out and place in the support as many reactions as motions are restricted. Let me write here first the active forces, which are the forces that are being applied to the system, which are those three forces. So those are active forces. And then let me put the reactive forces. As I said, I have three forces that appear because there are three translations restricted and then there is three moments so this is I will write it positive so moment at AX moment at Y right and a moment let me put this over here therefore I have this moment over here so I have six, six reactive forces and moment, right? So the forces appear because the translation motion is restricted and the moment appear because the rotation are restricted. So this is my free body diagram. I can actually add also my distance, right? I will need them to take moment. So this is 1.75, 0.75, and I have this distance over here, and this distance over here. Now that I have my free body diagram, I apply my equations of equilibrium. And my equations of equilibrium in 3D include adding forces in X, adding forces in Y, adding forces in uh, C, and then taking moment about one point, and that moment will have three components in X, in Y, and in C. So let me add forces, and forces in A and X will be equals to zero. What forces do I have in X? I have this. Here, as you see, the sense is opposite to the positive direction, therefore it's negative 400 newtons, and I don't have any other force in X, but I have my reaction force. Therefore, from here, I can already solve for AX, which is equal to 400 newtons. So this is my first result. Then I can add forces in Y, and the forces that I have in Y is this uh, 500 newtons over here. 
the sense is the same as the positive direction of y, therefore it's 500. And I have a y equals to zero. Therefore, I don't have any other forces in y. I solve for a y, and it gives me that it's negative 500 newtons. So that means that this is positive. It means that it goes along the x-axis. This is negative. It means that it goes in the negative y-axis, right? And I add forces in C, and I got that I have negative 600 because it goes in the opposite sense of the positive direction of C plus AC equals to zero. Therefore, AC is equals to 600 newtons. So therefore, this goes in the direction of the positive direction. So I was able to calculate all my forces that restrict displacement. Let's calculate now the moment. To do that, I will take moment respect to a, 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 right? Adding all the moments respect to a, this is a vector, will be equals to c. Therefore, the first things I do is add all the moments that are reactive forces. So I have here a moment in A, in I, I have a moment in Y, and I have a moment in C. Then I have to add, if I call this force one, this force 2 and this force 3, I have to add the position vector from A to where the force is located cross F1, plus the position vector where the force 2 is located cross F2, plus the R3 cross F3. So. I could do, I am, I am applying, this is applying the vector approach. Some of you will be very comfortable with the scalar approach and can also take a scalar approach even though it's a 3D problem by applying the right hand rule. But be careful because you really have to be to know how to apply the right hand rule in 3D. So right now we are applying the vector approach. So I'm going to do this calculation separately and then I add all everything together. So let me calculate R1 cross F1. R1 is, as you see, is actually easy because it's only in one direction, right? Which is C direction and it's 0.75 in K, so it will be 0.75K cross F1, which is 400 in negative I direction. I will not use a matrix because it's just one multiplication, so I will use, remember that I, J, K, if you multiply in this direction, so we are multiplying K times cross I, so K cross I, give me j positive with this negative value will give me negative 0 0.75 for 400 in j. Now we go to the second component which is r2 cross f2, r2. r2 is where the position vector of this force here f2, right, what we call f2. The position vector will be 1 0.25k plus j, 1 in j, cross, this force is 500 in j. And remember here that k cross j, k cross j is negative i. So you have negative 1.25 for 500 in i. And j cross j is equals to zero. So this is the result. 
And for the third one, the position vector of this force will be equals to 1.25 in K, 1 in J, and negative 0 0.75 in I, right? Cross this vector that is negative 600 K. So let's do this multiplication. Of course, you can always use the matrix. I will use the cross multiplication with the distributive property. So here, K cross K is equal to zero. J cross K, J cross K is I. And I have a negative number here. It gets a negative then, negative 600 in I. And then I have I cross K. I cross K is negative J. But I have two negatives, so it becomes negative 0 0.75, 600 in J. Now that I have these three components, what I will do is get my system of the three equations. So I will have an equation in I, and what components I have in I? I have this component right here, M, A, X, and I have this component right here, negative 1.25 times 500, and I have this component, 600. This is equals to zero. Here, I have one equation that allows me to solve for this moment over here, and that moment gives me a value of, and don't forget the units, newtons, meters. Now, in J, I have this over here, M, A, J, and from these three components which are in J. This one is in J, and this one is in J. Therefore, I have negative 0 0.75 for 400, and this one, right, negative 0 0.75 times 600. Final, this is equal to 0, and the only unknown in this equation is this moment over here. I solve for that moment, and I get 750 newtons meters. And the last equation is in K, and here I have the moment in K. And from these three uh, moments, I see that I don't have any k, so that will be equals to zero, and therefore I already solved for moment at c is equals to zero. So we were able to use six equations. of equilibrium for a 3D problem to solve for the six unknowns. Remember that a rigid body in 3D has six possibilities of motion, and I need six reactions to maintain the rigid body in equilibrium. And this is the solution of this problem.